that might lend credence to scripture. There's a group on earth today dedicated solely in a way facts that might lend credence to scripture. This is a hey, hey. yeah, hey, I'm gonna do my old state code. I'm gonna do the scripture to back it up. There's a lot of scripture, I got a lot of work to do, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna turn the tablet down. Okay, let's go back. Great subject to talk about uh, with my guest Steve Quayle because he has delved into, uh, if you will, the conspiracy to hide biblical truth. Gary, there's a global effort orchestrated from, I believe, Lucifer, who became Satan, to totally destroy, to hide, cover up and cover over anything that gives the Bible, not, not that proves the Bible, but that basically gives evidence to the- Gee, Hanny looks a little bit frail, doesn't he? He hasn't got his old strong body because didn't he have COVID? He looks rather frail. Word of God, and that it is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating because for the people that deny that God exists, even the atheists and, uh, and let's say to a lesser extent, the agnostics, so many of the atheists and agnostics, even the captains of industry, are turning to... Yeah, Han, I'm going to revamp the show. I'm going to revamp my streams. This is the last time I do it like this. I'm going to do that garden thing and read Genesis 6, Scully Wayne, etc. So I am going to mix it up a bit. Satanism, because at the end of the day, it's about power. I had a very wealthy oil man once tell me, Steve, it's not about bragging rights. It's about power. When you get enough money that you can buy anything, buy anyone, do anything you'd like, he said, then it becomes a matter of power. So what is it, Gary? We know it's sin, but why is it so much that in all of man's uh, acceleration to wanting to be God, so many human beings are destroyed. See, that's the interesting thing to me, because when you're talking about the captains of industry and everything they're going to at this point, it goes right back to the Bible. They want to live forever. They want to be like God, and they want to determine who is livable. I mean, who is allowed to live and who basically is going to die, the useless eaters. And I am looking here at a DVD, Forbidden History Revealed, and uh, uh, Steve has uh, talked here about what he calls the Egyptian presence in America and the Pacific Rim. The Egypt, now, who ever heard of a thing like that, the Egyptian presence? And we look at Egypt, when we think of Egypt today, and, and maybe you've seen a historical perspective or read, read some books on ancient Egypt, what do you think? You think of a, of a people uh, totally steeped in idolatry. I mean, like no other uh, group of people who've ever lived, probably. They've, everything had to pertain to some god or demigod or the worship of, uh, of some strange creature who was only part human. And, and, and you think, well, that's a long, long time ago. That sort of thing is, is way in the past. It doesn't have anything to do with us today. And you would say, I would say that's the foundation for everything they do this day. There is a secret <laughs> priesthood that even Plato and, and, and talking about Atlantis, talking about the priests of SAIS, S-A-I-S, some people pronounce it SAI, but there's been an overriding control of ancient history. And just as the great uh, Library of Alexandria was burned, there are other depositories of that ancient knowledge. And let's face it, in any realm of if you will, secret society, the more esoteric, the more these people are built up to believe there's something special. And in their world, basically, everybody but them dies. And this is why the Egyptian presence in the Grand Canyon is so important. Um, I photographed the Grand Canyon from helicopters. You're highly appreciated. I photographed one day, a long day. We did a thousand miles of the Grand Canyon going up to the uh, page Arizona and then back again with really high powered cameras. But what was intriguing to me, Gary, 
is the fact that all of the landforms, for instance, as you go east of, of Monument Valley, which is the iconic American West where all the great Westerns are formed, yeah. you get into what's called the Valley of the Gods. Now, why is a land formation called the Valley of Gods? Why are all the landforms in the Grand Canyon itself, which by the way is 90% off limits, even to the Native Americans, 90% of the Grand Canyon, you're not allowed to go to. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that, okay. But they have names that are absolutely unique to Egypt. And there is no indication that any contemporary cavalryman or anybody that was an explorer brought that concept because the Native Americans themselves, especially the Pueblo people, they have a long history of the star people, uh, aliens, and they also have a long history of the foreigners who came. So in the forbidden history revealed for the first time in history, and this is what people got to understand, the cover up and cover over has taken place in the Catholic Church and antiquities. I'm not bashing Catholics, I'm just saying yes. that it was a real thing. The giants that were found in the island of Sardinia, some of the stories of those giants are absolutely phenomenal. It was on Sardinia that the island of, of the giants, that's what it's called, Isle de Gigantes or something like that. The point being is that all of the uh, giants that were in the Middle East with Joshua and Caleb and God was going forth and said, go kill them. They all split to Sardinia. From Sardinia, they basically dispersed throughout the world. And like everything, it's interesting, Gary, they were they were child sacrificing Canaanites, cannibals, and they went, like I said, they took that ancient knowledge and went all over the world. For the first time in history, and this was a, a gift from heaven, there's a gentleman who was invited to go into the secret warehouses of Smithsonian. In other words, imagine the last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first one, yeah. and was shown the Egyptian artifacts taken from the Grand Canyon. He was showing the giant mummies. He was showing giant bones. He was showing all of the Egyptian, if you will, antiquities that were were present and excavated. And I, I just let it slip a little bit. Why is 90% of the Grand Canyon off limits? Well, they'll tell you it's for ecological reasons. Wrong. Because U.S. military is literally on the rim, uh, drilled into certain caverns that they identify through all their their technical abilities and extracted, extracted giant mummies. There's a legend that Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, when they knew they were in big trouble with Rome, they sent their son, Alexander Helios, to the West with 50,000 of their uh, most trusted servants, scientists, etc. And for the record, they absolutely knew how to circumnavigate the globe. The idea of isolationism was pretty much the foundation of the Smithsonian by John Wesley Powell. So in other words, it was important for the idea that nobody traveled any place to, to keep the false narrative going because there's even evidence of the Chinese in the Grand Canyon Hi, and some of the caves, you know, uh, statues of Buddha, for instance. Now, uh, uh, Forbidden History Revealed uh, by Steve Quayle really uh, talks about this this man, John Wesley Powell, his comings, his goings. Uh, he operated on a, uh, on a premise, and his premise was that there is a certain historical narrative that we want to preserve for the Americas, and any other historical narrative we're going to hide away as, uh, as quickly as we possibly can. Now, to say that is one thing. To see this <laughs> is another thing indeed. Uh, because when I when I watched your productions, it, it suddenly became real at, at, at the visceral level, it, this whole thing. And I, and I said to myself, I now understand for the first time how all of, of the, the conspiratorial uh, ideas that, that the world has had are locked together into one idea. And that is to hide biblical truth. That is the conspiracy. That's the bottom line. And and. The word I was given by the people that fight the things that go bump in the night is that, remember, it's never what you see on the surface, but what's underneath. And so when we're talking about the history of the Grand Canyon, now this is what else is interesting, Gary. The giant mummies were taken to Area 51. 
And it's fascinating that Area 51 has gotten the, uh, you know, the, the, the what would you say, the fame it has. <laughs> so, you know, were they taken there in a flying saucer? Yes. I just have to ask. Yeah, but no, I'm, I'm kidding. But, but I guess we need to laugh a little bit because this is such a, a bizarre and dark motif. You almost have to just take a deep breath and look away once you begin to realize that how we have been manipulated. Well, and it's a matrix of manipulation, okay? It's like imagine a, a, a giant tapestry where every thread is evil, where every thread is designed to deceive, to destroy, and then weave it all together, and I think you've got the end times. Now, again, the reason that this is so important, because in this DVD, go into I go into the eyewitness testimonies of the genetic altering and genetic engineering labs using giant DNA and basically creating hybrids and creatures. If you remember this, that even the, the rumors of the golden age of Atlantis and, and uh, Hyperborea, Ultima Thule, Shangri-La, uh, all, uh, all of the, if you will, legendary mystical places, they even have in their oral tradition, or at least the legends about them, that they were destroyed by the gods, plural, when they got into genetic engineering. Hmm. And that's interesting because we're talking about a long time ago. And we all remember uh, the story in the Bible uh, where Moses and Aaron go before Pharaoh and Moses has the rod, the famous rod, and he throws it down uh, before uh, the, uh, the Pharaoh in order to demonstrate the power of God. It turns into a serpent. Basically, putting the finger in Pharaoh's face. This is what you are. You're a serpent. And what happens? Pharaoh calls the wise men, the sorcerers, the magicians of Egypt, and they did in like manner with their enchantments. In other words, they threw down rods that turned into serpents as well. And so right here in Scripture, you have to believe it if you believe Scripture. that It, it is possible to transmute no, I got to admit, I missed your links. I really missed your links. So, yeehaw. Thanks uh, for an object link. that is not living into a living being through occult oh, no power. Way. And my Bible says it. I believe it. And and Moses confronted this power. Now, that power, you're saying, has extended all the way down into the present. And it, it permeates. Well, Diane, that link. I haven't been able to say that for a few days. So, I'm glad you posted some links, but wow, they got no water. They can't even flush their toilet. It permeates everything. It permeates everything in the occult world. It permeates everything in the commercial world, in the religious world, too. You'd be surprised how, how you know, only God sees who really serves him versus those who feign to serve him. But what the central serpentine-like thread pattern is, Gary, is an, a hatred for Jesus, a hatred for God, and again, the ultimate destruction. By the way, conspiracy just simply means if two or more people get together and agree on a planned outcome that is secret, that's what a conspiracy is. And we see this now. The word magic is interesting because when you had Aleister Crowley being, if you will, the grandfather of rock and roll, he considered himself Mr. 666, and, uh, and, you know, all of the uh, occultists, they all... And Barbara Bush is Alistair Crowley's daughter. She looks exactly like him. Will ...go back to Egypt, and they go, all go back to the Golden Age, and they believe they are the recipients of the hidden occult and secret knowledge. I propose, and this is what's very fascinating, and you and I were talking about Mars, but the ancients, even the Greek times, claimed that they could see... Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in our solar system, going off with their naked eye. If you look at the Grand Canyon and in, in, in the Earth, and you uh, juxtapose it against the Valley Marineras, mm -hmm. the Grand Canyon on Mars, it's fascinating because it's a, uh, the Martian version is five times the depth and five times the length. And if they were in opposition, then you would get probably Roche's limit coming into play, where a greater gravitational body they can actually generate a plasma discharge between the planets. So imagine it's plasma cut and not hydrologically cut. Why does Mars have a Grand Canyon and the uh, Americas have a Grand Canyon? And why is there Egyptians artifacts on Mars, whether you believe it or not, 
Uh, Richard Hoagland made it well known, and there were actual photographs of face on Mars and stuff. But when you take Cydoni in the plateau and you start to geographically sync it with places uh, on, and especially in North America or other parts of the world, you find out the correlation. It's Mars, and by the way, the Egyptians, the word Cairo means encampment of Mars. No Interesting. Way. Now, Steve goes fast, so you have to hang on tight. But what he's saying is that uh, all of those place names in the Grand Canyon, Egyptian place names, think about that. How long have those been there? I mean, uh, for, for as long as men have been there, I suppose. Well, 2,500 years ago is, you know, the time when a lot of this stuff, 200, 300 B.C., so where we're at now, and giant beings, mummified beings, have been found in caves in the Grand Canyon. Yes, sir. Spirited away and kept secret. By the way, giants are being spirited away and kept secret because it's part of a uh, of a plan to sort of uh, put limits on what we think and, and the connections we make with the ancient world. If you can hide all the giants. Diane, that Hunter's laptop, I'm pretty sure the media is turning on Hunter now and admitting that the laptop's true. I'm pretty sure New York Times has sold him out, so yeah. Uh, you can then spin a narrative. That, hey, uh, Brenda, good to see you. Narrative, and that's what's going on today. And that's what this uh, forbidden history is all about in, in this DVD. I, it's very difficult for me to describe what Steve has done. You just have to see the DVD. Well, I think if people are skeptical, especially the Grand Canyon the Egyptians, Listen, one of the prime ministers of Egypt made a request to the United States government to return all Egyptian artifacts, if they were gold, but to destroy any other, uh, let's say this, out of place, ooh parts, out of place artifacts, just to destroy them. When you come to our Holocaust of Giants DVD, the parallels to the cover up and cover over that we took place in the desert southwest or that we interviewed different people and uh, went to different sites and everything, then you juxtapose that or you you put it up against Sardinia and uh, Rome and the whole Catholic Church cover up. It becomes phenomenal that everybody everywhere wanted to do away with the giants, especially in South America. But guess what? Some of the conquistadors kept such precise and concise notes, uh, diaries. They want to make sure the king got his share. And they, they want to make sure he got everything. <laughs> and so the point is, they talk about one skull where one of the uh, conquistadors took his rapier, 42-inch blade, put in the eye socket, and the tip of the blade touched the back of the skull. Well, just because of the stuff we've been doing on giants and stuff, that made the guy right about 36 feet tall. Wow. And this is hard to believe. In fact, you're, you're shaking your head right now and saying, uh, uh that can't be. Well, just give it a try. Uh, listen to some of the things that Steve has produced. And what you will see in the end is that there is a, an amazing, if you will, magnificent conspiracy designed to cover up a simple fact. And that is that God has uh, a system and a plan that goes all the way back before the flood, comes all the way up through to us, and it involves an incursion of, of dark forces from above that are in constant, uh, uh, if you will, constant battle with humanity. And this battle goes on to the very present day. But we've been, I think, uh, desensitized to the point that we, we're not aware of the battle as much as we should be. And that's where you come in. Well, again, you can't win a war if you don't understand how the battle's fought. And just like Jesus in the fig tree, I'm saying, what I try to present is, look, the root of evil is obviously Lucifer, Satan. There are people that want to argue over Lucifer, Satan. Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning. You know, I'm not going to make that argument. I'm, I'm, it's just rested in my heart. But Satan means adversary. Sure. So the adversarial position of all science, all modern science, at least the open science, is all geared around it's interesting, denying God, yet becoming God. I, I find that a, a dichotomy and a paradox. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it's illogical. Uh, I want to stop for just a minute and, and tell you that how you can get this uh, this DVD and some others that go along with it. Uh, Forbidden History Revealed, uh, uh, we're uh, making available in a package 
and it, it is accompanied by uh, another DVD, uh, which is called True Legends, Holocaust of Giants. And Tom Horn, and by the way, you're in this with Tom, uh, has put together a, um, a remarkable uh, study based upon interviews with uh, uh, the Indians of Southwestern America who tell a story that is in perfect congruence with the, the, the overall story that the Bible tells about the giants. And then we have True Legends, uh, The Unholy Sea. Tell us about uh, the contents of this one. Well, The Unholy Sea is basically the story of all of the Catholic Church under the different uh, popes to control the flow of history and to deny the giants because again then they have to deal with the whole thing of the fallen angel sex with women all that stuff but also as tom horn has done a marvelous job of, of showing people the catholic church themselves are into aliens even talking about baptizing the aliens if yeah. they came which is bizarre which is bizarre because they're not creating the image and, and people ask me can aliens be saved the answer is absolutely not because they're not born of the seed of adam but when they talk about granting robots rights, in other words, Tobor the robot has the same rights as you, there's something wrong. Not, it, it's the people that claim that have loose screws, not the robots. Okay, I'm not sure if it's my screen froze up or there, so I'll just reboot it. Ah, it was mine. Look, my Wi-Fi has dropped out. And we're back. Uh, no, hang on. There it is. And just like Jesus in the fig tree, I'm saying what I try to present is look, the root of evil is obviously loose. Brenda, it's worse than baptizing the aliens. The Pope's actually said he might be willing to be baptized by the aliens. In other words, the aliens have got the superior moral code that they baptize us. We don't baptize them. So I have to dance a bit more from that. The first Satan. There are people that want to argue over as Lucifer Satan. Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning, you know. So I'm not going to make that argument. I'm, I'm, it's just rested in my heart. But Satan means adversary. Sure. So the adversarial position of all science, all modern science, at least the open science, is all geared around, it's interesting, denying God yet becoming God. I, I find that a, a dichotomy and a paradox. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it's illogical. I want to stop for just a minute and then tell you that how you can get this uh, this DVD and some others that go along with it. Uh, Forbidden History Revealed, uh, uh, we're uh, making available in a package, and uh, it, it is accompanied by uh, another DVD, uh, which is called True Legends, Holocaust of Giants. And Tom Horn, and by the way, you're in this with Tom, uh, has put together a... Um, a remarkable uh, study based upon interviews with uh, uh, the Indians of Southwestern America who tell a story that is in perfect congruence with the, the, the overall story that the Bible tells about the giants. And then we have True Legends, uh, The Unholy Sea. Tell us about uh, the contents of this one. Well, The Unholy Sea is basically the story of all of the Catholic Church under the different uh, popes to control the flow of history and to deny the giants because again then they have to deal with the whole thing of the fallen angel sex with women all that stuff but also as Tom Horn has done a marvelous job of, of showing people the Catholic Church themselves are into aliens even talking about baptizing the aliens if yeah. they came which is bizarre which is bizarre because they're not creating the image and, and people ask me can aliens be saved? The answer is absolutely not, because they're not born of the seed of Adam. But when they talk about granting robots rights, 
In other words, Tobor the robot has the same rights as you. There's something wrong. Not, it, it's the people that claim that have loose screws, not the robots, okay? And finally, we have True Legends. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. Well, True Legends is basically a video presentation of all of the ancient cyclopean architecture. And to use the word cyclopean, that means well, the cyclops, three of them in uh, ancient Greek mystery, but they were the builders, the master builders of the human race. By the way, the word belly hand, mythology and legends, uh, most people probably don't know that unless you bring it up, but belly hand literally was the cyclops were so big and so good at building, they would crawl on their bellies and dig the giant tunnels. I'm not saying that happened. I'm just saying that was a legend. Mm -hmm. But the point of the true legends that the, the Holocaust of giants, the technology of the fallen, and forbidden history revealed, all of them build the same picture, okay? And we're told in scripture, aren't we, Gary, to build precept upon precept? And it, I think it becomes more uh, uh, conducive to people having a great understanding. Study to show thyself approved unto God. That there's too many workmen that don't want to go to the field. And there's too many people that think that they have to be at the mercy of some PhD in molecular biology or astrophysics. They don't. How true. Now, the effect that, that these productions have on me, and, and by the way, I believe in the divine and full inspiration of the Word of God. <clears throat> Every last word in this Bible Amen. comes from God, and it is our guide, and it is our uh, gift. But the thing is, when I watch these DVDs, uh, every one of them builds in me uh, a, if you will, a confidence <clears throat> in the truth of Scripture. Because Scripture rips open the conspiracy. Hum human beings would like to hide all this. And, and people like Steve Quayle go out with the camera and they come back and they make DVDs. And you say, wow, now I really believe Scripture because Scripture talks about magic before Pharaoh and it talks about giants and it talks about the wars between uh, the giants and, and the 12 tribes. And these things really happened. And when you suddenly, when you suddenly get, get, go like this and say, wow, it's true, it's all true, it confirms the word of God. One of the stumbling blocks that people have in believing God is a God of love and of mercy and stuff, and this is a question you probably had in your years of, of encounters with human beings, is that how can a loving God tell the children of Israel to go in and kill every man, woman, and child in the promised land? Right. And the answer to that sets a lot of people free because they weren't wow. humans. They were hybrids. And ladies and gentlemen, God so, uh, how should I say this, so firm in his judgment on evil that he will not allow. And that sounds like the Pope and the Catholics know something's coming. That's like calling your ambassadors back to your country. Well, that's pretty big. Because then he knew that the children of Israel would start having, I'll use my word, hanky-panky with the Canaanites. And basically, pretty soon, the, the uniqueness of God's creation and calling a people out to himself would be tampered with. Same reason why only Noah and his family were considered. So that's the question. I can't tell you, Gary, how many people have said, Thank you. Now I understand. Yes. In essence, go kill the monsters, not because they're misbehaving children, but because they are they're hybrid and they're monsters. And the Canaanites were a corrupted population. Oh, totally. They were so corrupt. And by the way, the Canaanites was the religion of the giants. They, I, I believe it was the giants who originated the ridge and the, you know, as, as the size decreased before the flood, they were bigger. After the flood, the giants were smaller. Uh, but the point being is, is that the Canaanites are, and we're worshiping Cain right now. Every time one single abortion, that's, that's a worship. That's the blood worship of Cain. Now, I talked about four DVDs, and we were going to make those available to you, plus uh, a couple of bonus features. If you buy the four DVDs uh, for $100, and by the way, that's a real value given what's on them. Uh, your gift of $100 free shipping anywhere in the U.S. It will be accompanied by uh, a bonus. Unearthing the World, the Lost World of the Cloud Eaters is a book that goes into the same subject. And uh, we have Ryan Peterson's uh, uh, testimony here about how he wrote his book. It's called Judgment of the Nephilim. 
And this interview deals all about the same subject from a slightly different perspective. So this package, the True Legends Archaeology Package, is to be found in our online bookstore, prophecywatchers.tv. Scroll down the online bookstore and just look for the True Legends Archaeology Package, and you'll get all six of these items and prepare for a ride if you haven't studied these things, and you need to, because it's going to expand how you perceive the Word of God. Even the aliens, the tie-in between aliens and giants is absolutely, you can't argue about it, because some of the, uh, I think it was Barry Kamish, when he was uh, alive, wrote a book, something like, uh, uh, what, uh, Giants in the Holy Land or something like that. I forget, I read a long time ago, but he made the point that some of the aliens getting off the flying saucers that were landing in Israel were basically nine feet tall. And so the point is, people go, there had to be a big spaceship. But the point being is is that it was fascinating because you've got little ones, as you know, the grays. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that is all designed to take the people of God, their heart away from the true God. It's, if you will, it's walking idolatry. And the knowledge, they'll give you 95% truth, maybe, but the 5% will damn people to eternal hell. And I was chuckling a minute ago because somebody for the first time heard about, about flying saucers landing in Israel and aliens getting off. And, and they said, uh-oh, that, I've had it. That's where I, right. I, I'm, I quit. <clears throat> Let's put it this way. Steve's studies have taken him into places that make the word of the Lord very, very real. That is to say, there is a battle. It is going on even as we speak. There are players in this battle. They inject themselves into the human race from time to time. They have created an alternate race of people. Uh, The Bible calls them giants. They've taken on various forms. And you can believe it or not. I suggest you believe it because it will enhance the way you study Scripture. And uh, Forbidden History Revealed will kind of add to that. Steve, uh, uh, I... I, I think it's wonderful that somebody like you has delved into these subjects. Well, it's been my passion and to make Jesus known. And again, Gary, when I when I got saved, miraculously saved from the guttermost, the uttermost, I noticed on a university level just how many people could not answer the basic questions of who am I, where did I come from, where am I going? And I thank God for the gospel because it's good news. And I want to tell everybody out there, God's not afraid of an honest question. Yeah, you know, That's people true. you know, people think you play stump the king of glory. I don't think so. So the point is is that I, and I would say this to the listening audience, the viewing audience, always take it to the Lord in prayer. Say, God, I want to know the truth. Your Holy Spirit's a spirit of truth. Tell me, is this real? Because again, Gary, it's my word, it's your word, but more importantly, it's God's word. And everything I've done, believe it or not, in all the books I've written, everything goes back to Genesis six. It's the foundation. So here's the thing. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That applies to the understanding of the Bible in our day. There's very little of it. Well said. Steve Quayle, he's constantly uh, on the move. He's constantly researching. He has connections. He uh, understands uh, uh, where the questions need to be asked and where the cameras need to be taken. And uh, let's face it, he's on the cutting edge. Steve, thanks for being here. Thank you, Gary. It's been delightful. Okay, guys, like I said, just a quick one today. I just want to do that Steve Quayle, Egyptians in the Grand Canyon, because Han got a lot of views, because Han Han steered me on to this at first. Um, I'm working on something really interesting. It's a bit of hard work, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to uh, post it, but I am working hard on something, and there will be results. So that'll, that'll be interesting. I'm going to get StreamYard for the chat so we can all chat on StreamYard perhaps. And I'm going to do a, do a bit of stuff outside in the garden. Like I'm thinking of reading from Genesis 6, Conspiracy, Gary Wayne, reading chapters from that because it's very interesting. So I've got some ideas, guys. But I'm out for now. See you tomorrow. God bless.